Hey gang, hey gang. Mark Sweeney here from Austin Dental Spa in Austin, Texas. I'm feeling a little bit festive today uh, with Christmas upon us. Um, and I'm glad y'all joined us for another version of Wisdom Wednesday. Uh, December, we're halfway into the month. Christmas is less than two weeks away. Hope you've got your shopping done. If you don't, I hope you're an Amazon Prime member uh, so that you can still get some things done before Christmas. I cannot believe that 2018 has whizzed by like it has and that but it seems like once Thanksgiving goes by, all of a sudden Christmas is right on top of us. But it's a great time of the year. We've decorated the office up. Next week we're gonna take a little tour through the office. Uh, every place except the cafeteria area, the lunchroom, because you wouldn't believe what dentists send each other for gifts uh, at this high time of the year. The exact same things that we spend the rest of the year telling people that they should not be eating. But that brings us to our health tip of the month. I've been doing a little research, very little research, but uh, I uh, was curious about this and um, the uh, New England Journal of Medicine uh, published a report that was reported in uh, the New York Times recently about weight gain during the holidays. That was very interesting, I thought. And then University of Oklahoma, of all places, <laughs> usually the, the, the studies we quote come from MIT or uh, University of Indiana Dental School seems to have a, be a fairly productive place. But University of Oklahoma took 100 students, or 94 students, uh, over the t period between Thanksgiving and Christmas and measured their weight gain. Between these two studies, just to sum it up, because everybody's worried about what are they going to, you know, how much weight are they going to gain during the holidays. The New England Journal of Medicine study found that the average American gains one pound of weight during the holidays. The caveat to that is most middle-aged and above Americans, which they considered 40 and above, they don't ever lose that pound. So they keep that pound on the whole next year and their, their average weight just rises each year. So over a five-year period, they're going to put on five pounds of weight that they just chalk up to middle-aged weight gain that they don't ever take back off. So uh, there's a pros and cons to that. Uh, but that study was uh, pretty well documented, and uh, so it, it it shows that you know you you don't have to worry that much about the one pound. The other thing they found in this study and the one from Oklahoma is that overweight people tend to gain more like five pounds of weight. Now they didn't completely close that loop and say, but they lose it. They, they, they just left that open. Do they ever lose that five pounds like the, the rest of the population that just gains the one? But people who are already overweight tend to gain more like five pounds. People who are healthy and maintain their weight the rest of the year tend to only gain one pound. But then they don't tend to take that pound off over the age of 40. So Take that information for what it's worth. Don't worry about overindulging during the holidays, at Christmas parties, at, uh, on Christmas Day, on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. But be sensible about it, just like everything else. Um, and try to take that pound right back off uh, during that first three months of gym membership that somebody's going to give you at the beginning of the new year <laughs> before the sun comes back out and everybody quits going to the gym again. So. There's our health tip for the for the uh, holidays uh, coming up. up, up. Um, our research project for today, my main topic, very interesting article came out. This one actually, University of Florida. Some researchers at the University of Florida Dental School found a in researching all the bacteria types in the mouth, and they isolated 2,000 different kinds of bacteria. But they found one previously undiscovered streptococcus uh, uh, brand or type that they have called A12 because usually it's streptococcus mutans or something like that. They haven't even given it a second name. But 
I bring up strep mutans because that's the main one that we battle with that helps keep me in business. They taught us about that way back in dental school 40 years ago. Strep mutans is the main bacteria in almost everybody's mouth if you have teeth. The bacteria like to hang around the teeth and when you eat, they eat. And the strep mutans forms this sticky substance on your teeth and as it grows, the sticky substance attracts more bacteria, more food particles, and that's what creates the biofilm or the plaque that eventually causes decay and it can also cause gum disease. So strep mutans, we've been told since I started dental school, that's bad bacteria. This A12 strep that, that these researchers isolated actually fights with strep mutans and when they put them both in the same culture plate the a12 inhibited the growth of the strep mutans and it completely in, in a, inhibited its ability to form a biofilm or the sticky substance so they're all over this thinking that there are multiple uses for this a12 if they can figure out a way to create biological warfare by either putting it in toothpaste probably more as a probiotic, like a pill that you would take. I have a lot of patients that do that for intestinal issues and they take probiotics that have healthy bacteria and funguses in them to fight the bad ones that apparently are growing in their gut and get that all under control. So this would be something similar in the mouth where you would introduce this A12 streptococcus into your mouth purposely to inhibit the growth of the strep mutans, which we already know most everybody has, and some people who have rampant troubles with decay or gum disease have a lot of strep mutans. The strep mutans, as it grows and gets bigger, it drops the pH in your mouth, which makes it more acidic. The A12 inhibits that ability of strep mutans also. The other use of it that, that these researchers are thinking would be as a, um, a genetic marker as a biomarker or you know to test people to develop a test where we could swipe your teeth with a with a q-tip rub it on a, a, a on a medium and it would show how much a12 you have in your system that would be an indicator because I can tell you right now I was interested in this because we've got certain people that all they had, me included, when I was a kid, all I had to do was look at a picture of a piece of chocolate cake and I got a cavity somewhere in my mouth. So I learned early on in my life, I had to keep down the amount of that stuff that I could eat and still get away with it. And I, by the time I got out of dental school, was a pretty fanatic flosser brusher, uh, keeping my teeth clean. Haven't had a new cavity in my whole adult life since I was in my early 20s. Uh, but all that old dental work that was already in there has had to be redone on occasion. So if we can inhibit that as dentists, it's a game changer. So that's our research for the project for the day. I hope you have a great second week of December, and we will look forward to seeing you next week for Wisdom Wednesday, the last Wisdom Wednesday before Christmas. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and Happy Hanukkah just ended.